obviously to the staff. I'm extremely excited uh, about what I've been able to witness with Coach Pierce and his staff uh, through Summer League. And uh, the past month or so, we've had a lot of guys in working hard, uh, getting ready for the season. Um, with that, I'll let Coach Pierce. Yeah, just to, to, to follow up with that, obviously it's been a while since I sat in this seat uh, being hired and then with the draft picks coming in and doing their press conference as well. But uh, a lot of productivity um, since summer league and having the guys now formally coming back into town and getting organized and everyone has apartments and places to live and this is home for all of us. Uh, but we're excited about training camp coming up on uh, Tuesday. With that, we'll take your questions. <laughs> Or go home. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, a little bit about uh, trends in the league that you're seeing. Uh, League-wide almost. It's shoot threes, layups, and free throws. What's next from a defensive perspective to counteract this? Um. You know, I, I wouldn't say next. I think it's already emerging is just the, the ability to switch. Uh, you're seeing a lot of teams switch one through four um, because the four men in the league. Now, I think that's one of the biggest positions that has shifted. You don't have the Charles Oakley, Charles Barkley types. You have the Ryan Andersons, Tollivers, guys that really are space guys that, that space behind a three point line and, and affect and impact the game that way. So the ability to switch one through four. Your 6'10 guys need to guard 6'3 guys, and they need to guard them out on the perimeter. And that's the biggest component. That's the biggest area. I was at the coaches meeting, head coaches meeting in Chicago last week, and a lot of the point of emphasis videos were tilted towards smalls switching onto bigs or getting cross matched on the bigs. And a lot of coaches were saying all of the videos should reflect that because that's the where that's where the game is going. It's no longer. Uh, accidentally switches. We're purposely uh, trying to switch one through four to avoid giving up threes, which is a major point of emphasis offensively in the league. So, Coach, along that, on those lines, do you see the four and the five as interchangeable, or um, is that separate enough and where we would see John Collins? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, that's part of the excitement for next week is you want to be able to look at your roster and you want to evaluate um, different styles, different matchups. We're going to play teams that will have KD at the five and Dirk at the five. And, um, you know, Dirk's at a stage now where he's just behind the three-point line and he's still very lethal. And we have to be able to guard guys like that, uh, regardless of what position they are. We've, we've got to be able to balance and create advantages for ourselves. So guys like John, Amari, um, the ability to play the five and create different advantages for us where he can not only roll, but he can space the floor. Um, at some point, I think it'll come into play. It's definitely coming into play in this gym, but to, to put it onto the court from a matchup perspective, we'll, we'll find out soon. So you don't see him as a five? I don't, not, not naturally. I mean, the biggest thing with any player is you keep him in their natural position. And he's been a four his entire career and because the game's changing. Doesn't mean he just has to drastically jump and be a five. Um, I, I think there's advantages both ways. We've got shooting fives. Dwayne Dedman shot 35% from three last year. So it doesn't knock a guy. You know, you just, you have shooting fives in the league. Uh, this is for, for both of you. Uh, starting with Travis, if you don't mind. Uh, kind of following up on, on what Bob and, and Viv were uh, talking about with those bigs that have the versatility to be able to step out. But you also have uh, some really big guys that are your traditional centers uh, and, and Lynn and Jason Aldridge. Um, what do you see from those guys in addition to Dwayne that, can, that they can give you, I guess, is it more just for anchoring defensively? Uh, what do you plan on doing with them offensively because they both have certain skills offensively, particularly Glenn? Well, um, a big part still of the game is rim protection. And that's what those guys give. Um, with Alex, you know, we see a guy who's still only 25 years old, uh, and we think there's upside with him. Um, you know, the other guys, one thing that's real important as well with all our skill guys, you got to get them open. 
Uh, you, need, you need big bodies to set screens to get guys open looks. Um, so when we sign those guys, that's you know, what we're going through. And I'll let the coach obviously talk about how we plan on using them. But those are real important parts of the game still, you know, rim protection. And then you need guys to set screens and get guys open. Assistant coach Melvin Hunt, uh, we were, were doing our coaches' meetings now in anticipation of training camp, and he gave a great quote the other day, and he said, uh, like the three, love the rim. And, you know, when you have a big guy like Alex Landon, you can play pick and roll with Jeremy and Trey in, in, in the mid pick and roll with Alex. We're still trying to get to the rim. And what that does is it just prevents, it presents additional problems. We want to score high efficient baskets at the rim. We've got a 7 2 center. We got Dwayne Deadman. We got John Collins who rolled to the basket and scored in the paint 72% of his shots last year. Um, we still love the rim and the paint, but it's also an opportunity to create paint to great kickouts and opportunities once the defense collapses. So it's a combination. And as Travis said, you know, 7 2 is 7 2. You know, big guys like that are great rim protectors. And as much as we love the rim, we also have to protect the rim. For both of you, since it's still pretty early in a painful rebuilding process, how are you going to be able to measure success in ways other than obviously wins and losses? It's not painful for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Um, We've said all this last year, and it'll it'll be the same this year. What we're going to look for is for our guys to develop and continue to get better. You know, we saw that last year with John. John was almost an exclusively a role guy, and as the season went on, by the end of the year, you know, you saw him stepping out and catch and shoot corner threes. And then in summer league, you know, coach put him in positions where now he's picking and popping at the top of the key. So you see the transgression that he's made and we're going to look for that for all our young guys uh, individually and collectively same for me uh, painful is not anything i'm going to feel this year um, you know part of sport is growth and for us the growth and development of our guys is, is the most important thing um, we say it every day you know how are we going to win today what's our win for the day and we have to measure um, 10 game clumps you know what are we focusing on and are we getting better? Next 10 game clumps, what are we focusing on and how are we getting better? Now, are we getting better? That's individually and that's collectively as a team. If we're trending that same way, that's what we're measuring. You know, what the number is and when the timeline is is not really up to us right now. It's really about measuring our guys and their performances on a daily basis, on a 10 game basis, on a nightly basis of improvement, growth, and development.